Hello everyone, welcome back again with us at Military TV. In this episode, we're going to talk about the Suez Canal and why it is so important. The Suez Canal is a sea-level waterway running north-south across the Isthmus of Suez in Egypt to connect the Mediterranean and the Red Seas. The canal separates the African continent from Asia and it provides the shortest maritime route between Europe and the lands lying around the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans. It is one of the world's most heavily used shipping lanes. The canal extends 120 miles between Port Said in the north and Suez in the south, with dredged approach channels north of Port Said into the Mediterranean and south of Suez. The canal does not take the shortest route across the isthmus, which is only 75 miles. Instead, it utilizes several lakes from north to south, Lake Manzala, Lake Timza, and the Bitter Lakes, Great Bitter Lake, and Little Bitter Lake. The Suez Canal is an open cut, without locks, and though extensive straight links occur, there are eight major bends. The canal, originally owned by French investors, was conceived when Egypt was under the control of the Ottoman Empire in the mid-19th century. Construction began at the Port Said, and in early 1859, the excavation took 10 years and the project required an estimated 1.5 million workers. According to the Suez Canal Authority, the Egyptian government agency that operates the waterway, 20,000 peasants were drafted every 10 months to help construct the project, with excruciating and poorly compensated labor. Many workers died of cholera and other diseases. The Suez Canal's international status has a murky history. Per the 1888 Convention of Constantinople, the canal is open to ships of all nations in peacetime and wartime. However, there have been numerous instances of ships being denied passage in wartime, especially during World War I and World War II. Because of tensions with Israel, Egypt closed the canal during the Suez Crisis of 1956-57 and the Arab-Israeli War of 1967. Now let's see the Suez Canal during wartime. In 1888, the Convention of Constantinople decreed that the Suez Canal would operate as a neutral zone, under the protection of the British who had by then assumed control of the surrounding region, including Egypt and the Sudan. The British famously defended the canal from attack by the Ottoman Empire in 1915 during World War I. The Anglo-Egyptian Treaty of 1936 reaffirmed Britain's control over the important waterway, which became vital during World War II when the Axis powers of Italy and Germany attempted to capture it. Despite the supposedly neutral status of the canal, Axis ships were prohibited from accessing it for much of the war. After the end of World War II in 1951, Egypt withdrew from the Anglo-Egyptian Treaty. In response, in October 1956, troops from Britain, France, and Israel threatened to invade Egypt, leading to the so-called Suez Crisis. Fearing an escalation in the conflict, Canadian Secretary of State for External Affairs Lester B. Pearsons recommended the establishment of a United Nations peacekeeping force, the first one of its kind, to protect the canal and ensure access to all. The UN ratified Pearson's proposal on November 4, 1956. Although the Suez Canal Company continued to operate the waterway, the UN force maintained access as well as peace in the nearby Sinai Peninsula. This was not the last time the Suez Canal would play a central role in international conflict, however. What about the Suez Canal today? Today, an average of 50 ships navigate the canal daily, carrying more than 300 million tons of goods per year. In 2014, the Egyptian government oversaw at $8 billion an expansion project that widened the Suez from 61 meters to 312 meters for a 21-mile distance. The project took one year to complete and, as a result, the canal can accommodate ships to pass both directions simultaneously. Despite the widened route, on March 23, 2021, an enormous container ship headed from China became stuck in the canal and blocked more than 100 ships at each end of the vital shipping artery. 
The big question arose, what are the effects if the ever given remains stuck? That depends on how long the canal, which is believed to handle about 10% of global maritime commercial traffic, is closed. Tradewinds, a maritime industry news publication, said that with more than 100 ships waiting to traverse the canal, it could take more than a week just for the backlog to clear. A prolonged closure could be hugely expensive for the owners of ships waiting to transit the canal. Some may decide to cut their losses and reroute their vessels around Africa. But the incident has shown what can go wrong when the new generation of ultra-large vessels like the Ever Given have to pass through the relatively tight confines of the canal. Although parts of it were expanded as part of a major modernization program in the middle of the last decade, it remains tricky to navigate and accidents can happen. So we conclude that the Suez Canal has been considered, since its establishment in 1869, as the most important artery and waterway for world trade between East and West. It is the most important waterway for moving petroleum between the production sources and consumption markets. Thus, it has a great impact on states' economies. In addition, it is considered as a path and gateway for the military convoys heading from the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. The Suez Canal's strategic significance has led to increasing conflict among the great powers over the Middle East influence. With Egypt's growing readiness to implement policy, the country has witnessed the implementation of some great national projects, the most important of which is the new Suez Canal project, the development of the current Suez Canal and the area alongside the canal. We must take into account the close relation between the new project and Egypt's national security and its military and economic dichotomies. The new project aims to transform the area into a world center for logistics and industry and a world trade service that acts as a major axis for economic development in Egypt. The location's advantages and characteristics in particular make it suitable to being a world center for industrial economic zones, distribution of transit trade and logistics services for ships and trade transiting the Suez Canal. In addition, the traffic goes through the Suez on average 50 vessels every day. According to the Suez Canal Authority, nearly 19,000 ships with a net tonnage of 1.17 billion tons passed through the canal during 2020 in the second highest load in the history of the canal. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.